everyone, this is Mike of Ma Capital uh, with an update for Tuesday, May 16th. It's around uh, 6 p.m. New York time. So uh, markets today traded mostly lower with the S&P 500 finishing down about 65 basis points. We'll just start off with the S&P. Um, for the most part, the S&P 500 has been very well contained. Uh, really, if you go back since April 3rd, we haven't really seen the S&P 500 materially try to break much above 4150. That's sort of been the upper bound. That's been the upper end of the range. There was this one uh, brief stint to 4180. One reason for this is again because of option positioning. The call wall, which is the level with the greatest call gamma, has been firmly planted at 4200 now for several weeks. And this is one of the reasons why you know I've been um, and and I've continue to be in this idea that you know there really isn't much upside in this market uh, because the call wall is really what's kind of keeping a lid on on the market from pushing higher and uh, at this point um, with option expiration coming on Friday we're likely coming to an end of this period of stagnation in the market I think we're going to see also an increased period of volatility uh, coming potentially uh, as early as tomorrow, given that tomorrow we're going to get VIX option expiration. And that's going to free the VIX to really begin to start trading more freely again once we get past that period of time. Because again, the, the VIX has seen its put wall down at the 17 level, uh, as long as, as as well as the big gamma level around the 17 level. And that sort of has kept the VIX well, well contained at around 17. The interesting thing about the VIX today is if you notice that um, the VIX uh, very much is kind of topped each time around 18, 1820 or so. We got there today. So you'll want to watch the 18 level on the VIX tomorrow. If it spikes, uh, you're going to get a, a pretty, uh, you could potentially get a pretty sharp move up in the VIX because you can see that uh, once it's gotten uh, beyond this 18-ish level on a couple of occasions, this led to some big spikes. Also, you've seen the VVIX, which is the volatility of the VIX moving higher as well. And sometimes this can be a leading indicator uh, for the VIX moving higher as implied volatility or expectations of higher implied volatility begin to filter through the market. Uh, and so when we look at the S&P, given that we have this bearish formation and this diamond pattern, given that VIX option expiration comes tomorrow and that could free the VIX to trade uh, more freely, uh, given that we could see gamma levels decline pretty significantly, uh, going into Friday and beyond, you're going to see this trading range begin to loosen up and begin to trade. Uh, you're going to see this range really begin to shift. Now the pattern here is a diamond pattern. Diamond patterns are, you know, technically, in this case, it's a bearish reversal pattern. Diamond patterns can also serve as bullish reversal patterns. But given that this move was higher, we've been consolidating sideways very much in what appears to be a distribution pattern. Suggests that the next move in the market is going to be down and that would be it should lead to a retracement of this entire rally is what this pattern calls for uh, again we'll have to take this step by step and day by day but the immediate target that i would be looking for in the s p 500 is for a gap fill down to this 4060 region uh, and depending upon how this formation forms if we were to gap lower tomorrow and then trade down to 4060 that would actually create an island reversal pattern up here uh, and that would also be an indication that perhaps there's actually even further to decline in the index. Um, again, when we're starting to go through and you start looking at other parts of the market, remember yesterday we were talking about the Dow and looking at some of the components. Well, we had Home Depot report results today, and that was down about 2%, and it was one of the reasons why you saw some extra weakness in the Dow. Uh, you are going to be getting you know, more earnings from some of these uh, retailers like Target and Walmart, and although they're not obviously all in the Dow, there's only 30 companies in the Dow, um, it's worth being aware at least that uh, there could be some added pressure to some of this retail space due to the due to what we're going to starting to see from these retailers. And especially we have to be curious to see what their what their um, margins are going to look like. You can see Walmart is in the Dow. And so it's worth keeping an eye uh, on these things. You also have Walgreens in the Dow as well. And so. You know, um, if you were to begin to see, you know, margin compression, uh, it could lead to uh, f further underperformance by the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And so you can see really the big level of support right here, uh, 32,968 or so. That's really the level. If that breaks, specifically, if we were to gap lower tomorrow below this 
region of support. I think that's going to probably signal significantly lower prices for the Dow to finally come as well. Um, and so that's sort of where we are with, with these markets at this point. If we look at the NDX, you can see the NDX today kind of grazed the upper trend line, hugged it. We tried to get above it and we came back down through it. Tomorrow, you're going to want to see where the NDX goes. You know, was this sort of just a bump out? Was this a fake out? Uh, are we going to continue to trade lower tomorrow in the NDX? You know, you have to think that if you're going to start seeing the S&P and the NAS and the Dow begin to give way, which is what their technical charts are saying, then you're going to see the same thing in the NASDAQ 100. So again, here's your uptrend that you need to keep an eye on, probably around the 13,000 375 to 13,400 region is the level you're going to want to watch because if that breaks that's going to signal that the uptrend uh, uh at least the uptrend portion of the rising wedge pattern has broken and that you're likely to see lower prices and a trade down to around 13,200 or so and it is important there is a gap that is also here that needs to be filled and this type of pattern is sometimes uh you know you you can see the whole pattern also uh, be erased uh, and trading all the way down to 12,950 or so again if this is that that bearish rising wedge pattern that we're seeing and I have reasons to think that you are going to see the market trade lower you saw the tip ETF also move down today you're seeing real yields moving higher you saw the TLT uh, today drop below that support level we've been watching um, again, at this 103-ish area, you're going to want to see the TLT stay below 103. If the TLT is staying below 103, that means yields are rising. That's going to further pressure uh, you know, stocks as well. The other thing that was really interesting today is you saw high-yield stocks really starting to get hit a little bit. The HYG today came down pretty significantly. Um, you can see right here. Uh, again, you're going to want to watch the HYG because there is a gap to fill at 73.36. One thing you can do to keep a, an eye on spreads is you take the SHY and divide it by the HYG, and that will give you sort of a, a similar comp to what the CDX uh, high yield CDSI uh, spread is on the index. And this, why this is important is because what you find is that implied volatility trends to trade with uh, changes in this in these high yield spreads uh, high yield spreads today up 14 points to 510 and you can see the relationship with the blue line being the vix and the white line being the high yield spreads you can see high yield spreads have been moving higher vix hasn't really paid much attention to it but again you're going to get through option expiration tomorrow if this high yield spread starts trading up uh, you're going to start seeing the vix trading up and although you may not have access to that you can kind of supplement it with this SHY HYG ratio. I've been using it now for some time to um, as a supplement. I'll show you. You can just do an overlay of the two, and it gives you a pretty good um, sense of of what's happening with some of these high yield spreads and what's what's taking place there. And that's another reason why you saw um, you know the market sell off later today as well because you saw these high yield spreads begin to widen as you went into the end of the day. Here's your ratio. And you can see that, again, it pretty much mimics what's happening in this spread. So it's a good, easy way and a cheap way if you don't have access to the data to keep track of, of what's happening. And again, if you're going to start seeing the spread move higher, one would expect the implied volatility to move higher as well. Um, so again, this is sort of where we are at this point. I think um, you, know, you have the dollar index, which continues to look fairly strong you're going to want to see if the dollar can manage to get past this 103 region if it gets past 103 i think it has room to run probably up to 105 you can see that in the euro as well the euro is kind of holding the 108 region once the euro breaks there's not going to be much to um support it and then finally one sector you may want to keep an eye on is the industrials uh the, the xli uh has been has really been a beneficiary of the weaker dollar if you see the dollar really beginning to strengthen, you're going to want to watch the XLI because it's probably going to start uh, declining. And remember, industrials can do a little bit better, especially if they're export oriented on a weaker dollar. It can help boost their revenue and earnings. If the dollar starts to strengthen, it makes their goods overseas a little bit less competitive. So that would be one reason why you might see uh, if, if the dollar continues to strengthen, one reason why you may see the industrial sector uh, really start underperforming as well. So. 
this is where we are right now. Uh, again, um, hope hope this finds you well, and I'll see you soon. Bye.